This past week I was one of 30 participants from different contemplative communities across religious uh, traditions who came together for an intensive two-day conference at the Ratna Ling uh, Buddhist Center in Casadera, California. And the topic of our discussion was the future of Dharma in America, which is a bit of a daunting title. <laughs> Um, the conference was sponsored by the Global Peace Initiative of Women. And uh, just a little bit about them. Their work is to fas facilitate the wisdom and compassion born from deep contemplative and spiritual practices to help shift the collective mindset of the country from one of separation and polarization to one of unity and common ground. This new narrative, they use that term a lot, this new narrative, <laughs> can help animate social and economic structures and systems that better reflect our natural evolution towards greater wholeness. And an essential part of this shift is coming into a sacred relationship with the earth and all the living forces of the universe. Feminine wisdom and the power of love can serve as the fulcrum for this inner and outer transformation. So sounds a little bit loose, huh? <laughs> and a little bit uh, large in its, in its reach. Um, the, uh, the Global Peace Initiative of Women who sponsored the conference, um, one, of their, uh, one of their aspects, I guess, or one of their main initiatives is called Contempla Contemplative Alliance. So this meeting of um, people from different spiritual traditions was part of this Contemplative Alliance or building of new Contemplative Alliances. And these are interfaith or interspiritual movements which are really trying to draw from the compassion and the wisdom experience of con Contemplative practitioners to, um, with the goal of heightening the awareness and generating, generating actions to address some of the critical issues of our time. And so, um, yeah, they're trying to address everything from um, pressing economical issues, social issues, environmental issues, by bringing different groups of people together. So this particular two-day conference focused on this theme of the commercialization of Dharma in, in the West um, the commercialization of practices in the growing mindfulness movement within the yogic and Buddhist traditions. And so the bios of the participants was uh, quite impressive. Initially, Venerable Trudrin was invited to attend the conference uh, accompanied by Venerable Simke. And because of her um, publishing demands, let's say, Venerable wasn't able to go and Venerable Simke succumbed to some bronchitis. And so being in California, I was the likely candidate to go, and I'm really grateful for having had that experience. I did feel a little bit like an interloper, because let me just tell you a few of the people who were there. So among the Buddhists, there was uh, Sensei Shugen Arnold, the abbot of the Zen Mountain Monastery in New York, who was ordained in 1988. Zarko Andrechevic, the founder of the Cham Buddhist Center in Croatia, uh, himself a 40-year practitioner. Elizabeth Mattis Namgyal, the disciple and wife of Zigar Kontrol Rinpoche, and their son, Dungse Jampel Namgyal, Rinpoche's heir apparent. Um, a young bhikshuni from the Chinese Mahayana tradition who has led many youth leadership conferences and meditation retreats worldwide. She's also been um, involved in some panels at the UN on um, youth leadership. Also, Melvin McLeod, the editor in chief of Lions Roar magazine, and also editor-in-chief of Buddha Dharma magazine, and he helped to found uh, a magazine called Mindful. These are just a few of the people that were there. Um, among the Hindus, now I didn't know, I've, I've not really met many Hindus, but um, I have now. <laughs> From among the Hindus in Vedic traditions, um, Swami Atma Rupu, Rup, Rupananda, an American who joined the Ramakrishna Order of India as a monk in 1969. He was a beautiful uh, sage elder in the community. He's now currently editing the complete works of Swami Vivekananda. There was Dr. 
Anuruddha Chowdhury, a graduate of the Sri Aurobindo International Center of Education and a resource person for teaching spoken Sanskrit. And she, I love talking with her because we discuss some, some of the um, Sanskrit meanings of words. And particularly, if we're talking about the future of Dharma among different traditions, first of all, we had to decide, well, what is Dharma? <laughs> what are we talking about? And she was very helpful in that conversation. Uh, Reverend Swami Om Karananda, a psychiatrist ordained in the Shivananda y uh, yoga tradition. A young man named Gopal, Gopal Patel. He's a millennial from the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies and is uh, now a leading voice on environmental issues for the global Hindu community. So there, you can see they're trying to grab from all sorts of cross sections, not only of religious traditions, but age groups, race, ethnicity. Um, Sradhalu Renande, a scientist, educator, and scholar on Vedic philosophy and the teachings of Sri Aurobindo. Um, there was also a rabbi, Rami Shapiro, an author of over 30 books on religion and spirituality. He kept us all laughing in stitches. He received his rabbinical ordination in 1981 and initiation into Ramakrishna order in 2011. So he's got a <laughs> quite, it draws from quite a variety of experiences and knowledge. There was also um, Pastor Naron Tillman, an African-American pastor from Brooklyn, New York, um, specifically working with troubled youth through teaching them how to engage in yoga. Um, and also uh, Alfred Tully, uh, a lovely international business consultant who is promoting compassion and wisdom as a means to build a prosperous and sus sustainable world for everyone, working with companies like Google and uh, the Gross National Happiness Center in Bhutan. Evidently, that's an NGO um, that works with the government of Bhutan, but it's, it's not something that the government has come up with. So what was interesting about this weekend, or this, this couple days of, of conference, was that there were no formal presentations. Instead, there were four sessions each day where we sat in a circle and discussed various topics. Um, and an evening program of chanting from the various traditions, e uh, chanting, short chants, and then a period of meditation. And I wonder if those periods of meditation weren't the most productive <laughs> uh, sessions that we had. Uh, it's, it was quite powerful to sit with, um, especially with people who've had so many years of practice. So um, as I uh, look through the discussion questions, it was quite amazing to see how broad-reaching they were. And, and I'm just going to mention a few of them. You know, I, I'm, I'm more comfortable um, telling you about facts than I am about repeating very fast-moving conversations, you know, from a two-day experience. And that's difficult for me to do and to capture. But I think just looking at some of our topics and then the conclusion by the, the moderator might give you an idea of, of how this conference went. So um, we talked about everything from is the easy movement of one type of spiritual practice to another helping to overcome divisions and separations that religions themselves can engender. With meditation, yoga, and other spiritual practices being reduced to stress reduction tools, how are teachers and practitioners immersed in the Dharma traditions responding to this? How do we protect the integrity of the teachings and prevent their abuse and manipulation for self-serving ends? And how do we maintain the truth of lineage while allowing our traditions to evolve? That, that actually got people's attention. We talked about that for quite a while. And there was some discussion about you know, some of the differences between Abrahamic religions and uh, who s tend to be more aligned to uh, fixed institutions and Dharmic traditions, which um, have traditionally held what's true, but also allowed to respond to different challenges. Um, also, there was a rousing discussion on how to reach young people um, who have grown up with the three-minute meditation apps, things like that. And again, there were some, a, a few young people among us who had a lot to say. Um, I have some, some things written down to share with the community on that. Um, with yoga being divorced from its spiritual roots in the Hindu tradition and mindfulness hardly any longer associated with Buddhism, how do we reclaim the positive contributions of religion without bringing back the baggage? <laughs> we had a rousing conversation about the long tradition of making offerings and donations to support spiritual teachers uh, versus charging for teachings and retreats. And this also I found quite fascinating, you know, that 
um, because Hindus also espouse to um, the idea of karma, the law of cause and effect and causality, and uh, it was it was difficult to bring into the conversation the idea that uh, resources come from generosity. Somehow, um, different traditions have lost that a bit. So that was uh, there were if there was a heated conversation, it was that one. <laughs> We talked about secularization and commer commercialization as an American, particularly American phenomena. There were people from Europe, uh, a number of people from India, um, who gave reflections on this, this type of phenomena being particularly associated with American, although it, it is found in other Western countries as well. And then we talked about contemplative, contemplative activism Transformation of a society can't take place without the transformation of self. I think that's understood across all of these traditions. Um, and so how is it that we move from self-focus to other focus and, and service? And so after we'd gone through two days of, of discussions, um, one thing that I appreciated about the conference was the incredible respect that everyone showed for each other as we listen to each other's ideas, um, which really ranged the whole spectrum. But as we got to the end, this is what um, the founder of the Global Peace Initiative of Women had to say. Um, she said, we have to work with thought forms. There was <laughs> a lot of emphasis on these thought forms. Um, <laughs> it's a little hard to connect, but you know, it actually w that's, that's really what we are exposed to a lot is different people's thoughts and those thoughts move us to act, don't they? I mean, they're, they're connected with uh, states of mind. We have to work with thought forms. We know the importance of the Sangha. As a collective, it was to bring together various Sanghas. Oh, as a collective, it was to bring together various Sanghas and connect them so that a larger collective thought form can be of service now. This is something we talk about a lot. There are great beings who never leave our consciousness these guides, these beings, we all have our own who are helping us. I find myself trying to align myself more consciously now because of all the negative thought forms being spilled into the world right now. So I think we have a responsibility of building a larger collective of positive thought forms that can overcome fear through love. Love is the most powerful force in the world. It manifests in our meditation. That is how we affect our environment. The way we deal with climate change is not just what just by new treaties, but by love, by actually loving the forces of nature, the beauty of nature, and by coming into relationship with what we have forgotten. So she said, I wanted to bring that into the circle because that is why we gather, really. We always have to have a topic to discuss. <laughs> it's almost incidental. Uh, it almost doesn't matter what the theme is. The real purpose is to build a collective spiritual force that can really be of service and overcome the negative energy that is being put forth now. This is what drives us, and we meet in different places to build these spiritual containers. So this was Dean and Miriam, the founder of the Global Peace Initiative of Women and the Contemplative Alliance. And so it was quite amazing how in two days, um, each of us developed very strong bonds and friendships with Everyone who was there, there was such a loving experience. Uh, by the end of that two days, it was uh, quite remarkable. Um, and so this is what they do. This is part of what they do, building these alliances in the United States as well as uh, across the globe. They've branched down into having these conferences um, in other countries as well. So although I, I did take some notes, I have some specifics of, of what was discussed. Again, it's difficult to really pick out um, themes uh, from our conversations. Um, but what I, what I can say is that there's a real power of a sitting in circle and listening to each other, developing respect, listening to each other, developing love, um, meditating together. And so I, from that experience, I just encourage people to start your own contemplative alliance. Get your neighbors together, get your friends together, and just sit and th think of a theme, and just have a conversation, and find the commonness that we all have, and uh, d develop that stronger commitment to bringing positive thought forms or positive energy into the world. How else are we going to change things? That's what I have to share.